Hey guys, in this video, got a little walking stick here. I'd say it's uh, about three feet tall. It was sent to me from a gentleman in the United States. His name's Robert Arrington, and he's from South Jordan Park uh, Parkway, Utah, South Jordan. So anyways, I'll be carving a wood spirit on this cane for him. And um, yeah, so I'll just take it up upstairs and start carving. Here's the handle that he holds on to, so I don't want to carve the wood spirit on that. So, but where to carve the wood spirit on the back or the front, I'm not too sure. I think this is probably the way he holds it when he walks. So I'll probably carve a wood spirit right back here. We'll see. We'll see. Thanks, Robert. Okay, guys, so got my coffee ready. Um, I got a pencil and a pen. I'm going to see if I can draw it on with pencil, but if you guys can't see it, I'll do it with pen. Um, I talked to the owner of this piece of wood, his walking stick, and he wants the wood spirit right under here. He calls this the smiley face. Look, it's a little nose. But he also warned me that this, oh yeah, this wood in here is very punky. Yep, so we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with that. So anyways, let's get set up here. You guys can go to my playlists and see step-by-step -step tutorials on wood spirits. I do one, one a year. They're like four video series, okay? So here's our center line. And this guy's going to have his beard wrapping around here. So you guys, when you, you got your stick, you got to think of like the size, right? Like how, so that's how big you got to gauge your nose. You know, you don't want to have too big of a nose on a stick like this, right? Because then it will take up the whole face and you'll have problems like making things adjust to look decent, right? So we're going to give this guy, let's see here. Um, okay. So we'll make his hair go up this way around here. Uh, so we'll give this guy's forehead um let's see here want to be safe we don't want to carve around too much in this area here so his forehead we'll start with his forehead this this time guys usually i start with the nose but the forehead then you can gauge where the nose goes right so hope you all uh able to make the live feeds thursday five o'clock make these five o'clock pacific time and uh oh yeah just carve rob got uh he just got it from amazon today is uh the master carver micro carver and uh, he'll have a video up shortly here on it and uh, he already says he loves it so he'll have a review video on that uh, master carver micro carver and it's pretty affordable he got it for 199 dollars american on uh 199 dollars american on uh amazon Okay, so you can see there my lines are off a bit, like for the bridge of the nose. I say to leave it thick, leave that thick there, guys. Don't draw your nose on like this, so it's a triangle because then the bridge of your nose will be too thin, right? So we'll always leave a gap in there when you start. It doesn't matter, bigger gap or smaller. Leave a bigger gap than a smaller gap. So this guy's beard wants to wrap around. Okay, so just wrap it around. I start off with one line first. Okay, so there's the first side of the beard. Now we'll do this side. It takes a while, a lot longer to wrap it around, but it makes your piece look better, guys, you know? And this is what I kind of, I don't, I'm not stressed out about this because I've done like 5 billion wood spirits, but when I'm doing a piece for somebody, it always stresses me out because you know, I want to make sure I don't wreck it because this might be a special walking stick to him. You know, it might be, I don't know if it is or not. It might be like, might've been his grandfather's or, you know, like somebody special or he found it with his granddaughter or something, right? They found it on a magical day on the beach. You just don't know. Don't pay attention to my lines, guys. I just scribbly. Okay, but there you can see. I will be using my uh, ram carver today. Later on, I'm going to start off using. I got a Dremel 4300, and it cuts off. I don't need to draw any more lines on there, but you guys can see. Okay, so there's his eyes will be like. Okay, and then his hair is going to go up around here, and then his beard will wrap around here. So I got this cuts off. 
I don't know what this bird's called, guys, but it's an extreme bird. It's got the, the tip, the sharper tip nose. Okay, so you guys, I left this loose too. I'm running out of Dremel 4300. If you want to go get cut soles, go to the site listed below. Use the code CFUSION to save yourself 5%. They are sold out of the flame type burrs right now like this, the extremes. But keep your eyes open, guys, because they will have some more for sale pretty soon. The government made them stop production, but they, they're letting them finish the production that they have with them going now. But these burrs, you want to push them in all the way. Don't run your burrs like this, guys, that far out and tighten it up. Because that's how you'll, you you can bend the shafts on these burrs, or you can screw up the bearings in, the, in the, your handpiece, right? So push it tight. Pull it out a little bit, not even that much, and then lock her up like that. Then you're safe. And if the bird gets stuck in here, which I know because this coal is getting worn out inside here. When the bird gets stuck in here, all you have to do is loosen this up. You can't pull your burr out. You just tap it on your table. It'll push it in. You can pull it out. I'll show you when I'm going to change burrs, how, what I mean, how this burr gets stuck in there. Sorry about the zoom in, but this is the extreme. Okay. So let's start curving. Also, guys, I have no type of wood. Uh, no clue what type of wood this is. So maybe Robert can leave a comment in the video description below when he sees this video. Okay guys, I had to stop carving. I heard my Dremel make a weird noise and a weird smell. So I'm thinking it's time to change the brushes. So it's always good to change, check your brushes in here guys. And your brushes, everything's unplugged, okay? There's no power hooked up to this. Make sure you unplug it when you check your brushes. So you undo these screws on this. There's one on this side and one on that side. Okay, see that spring pop out of there? See, it's stuck in there. The spring melted, look. There's no brush on it. It's completely worn off and it's stuck inside the shaft. If I can see inside there. So now I gotta get a screwdriver and scrape that out. That's terrible for your, um, for your shaft inside there, guys, because I'm gonna scrape it with a screwdriver, you know? So let's see this one. So don't think your Dremel stop working, guys, when it stops or you hear a weird noise. Stop. As soon as you hear that weird noise, just stop carving and check your brushes. Look. Look how low that brush is. Look at it. Okay. I should have checked it. That's my fault. My negligence, guys. So I got these brand new brushes here. I'm going to get them ready and I'll show you how you put them in. Okay, so I got it all cleaned out inside there. Nothing was stuck to the inner shaft. There's a metal shaft that runs inside here, guys. Okay, so I just want to explain quickly here. You see, if you can see that round, how it's there, rounded there, this is a brush, guys. Go to the Dremel site and try and find the proper brushes for your Dremels. You know, they come in little packs like this. And it's always good to have some on standby. Just like me, I had a pack or two on standby. It run, it stops. I can change brushes and go back to town. Go start curving again. So you want to put this so it runs this way in there. So it's, that roundness, if it makes sense, fits the shaft. So all you do is just, see? Slide her in, and what I do is I get a pencil, just push it in a bit just to make sure it's in there. Okay. So I know what's in there. Okay, and then you just, that's how easy it is, guys. You just put your cap on. Put your screwdriver in there, just a flathead screwdriver. And there you go. That's how you change your brushes. I'll do the other side and I'll get back to carving. Okay. Dremel 4300 brushes changed. Three, two, one. Try her out. Oh yeah. Good to go. Carve, Jordy. You must carve.
Okay, so you can see here I got lots of the bulking done on this now, okay? I still got to do the hair. But I thought, like I suggested in my other videos, it's good to pretend, like, see the two different colors here? This is the old, this is the new. I believe this is poplar or something like that. It smells like it. Poplar wood or whatever. It sure smells like it. But, um, so I'm going to take this outside and, with my uh, Orbit sander and use... Uh, some maybe 150 grit and sand all this stuff off because it's good to have a clean slate guys you know so because when i use the poly shade on this and you put it on this it might not take as the same to this as it does to this because this is fresher right and this is just old and it's i don't know if it's been has a treatment on it or if it's been oiled or whatever so i'm going to take this outside and uh film uh not film but just take all this off with my orbit sander quickly any of you guys go out and um, get those after Easter chocolate sales? Spider-Man, Spider-Man, oh yeah. Ripper open. There you go, you got some chocolate. 75% off. Let's start off with the Spider-Man head. Ah oh, yeah, yep. Okay, so I took her outside with my belt sander and cleaned her all up. Not my belt sander, my orbit sander. And I just got some 240 sandpaper grit here. I just wrap it around it and just kind of... Give it a nice round smooth finish okay so i got the the mustache carved in i haven't done any detail on the face yet i'll pull up my ram micro carver for that but now let's carve his hair but you guys you got to remember when you're making a walking stick for somebody you can't carve too deep because the last thing that you want to happen when they're using that walking stick if it breaks right you don't want it to break on them so i sounded that hole down a little bit more in there too not too sure what I'm going to do with this top. It's all punky in there. It's kind of ugly, but whatever. It's a walking stick. It's going to get thrashed, thrashed around and stuff. So I'm going to carve this hair up here and like that, kind of. Just a couple little strands up here. I'll leave that not the way it is. I don't want to cut too deep under that crack there because it will make a weak point, right? So I'll just do a couple curves up there. I won't film it. And then we'll get back and talk about doing some detailing. Okay, guys, so here's my Ma Ram Power Micromoto Carver, okay? I use this for details. It's very controllable. Just like just Carve Rob says in his videos, when you get a carver like this, it's like using a pencil. So I can do way finer shapes and stuff like that, okay? So let's turn it on. That's it running at 45,000 RPMs. Like I said, guys, Just Carve Rob just got a Master Carver one that was $199 American. So it's very afford affordable. And he's already saying he loves it. And he's just uploading his video now. So let's turn this on. It's got forward and reverse. It's a lot quieter than Dremel. And watch, like, no vibrations, guys. Nothing. That's 37, let's crank it up. There's 45, it sounds louder in the video than it actually really is. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off for a second. And I'm gonna carve these eyes in. I might have to use my magnifiers. Like this is a jeweler's mask. It really helps when you're doing small carvings, guys. Okay, and I'm using these diamond burrs. This is, these are aggressive. You guys can buy these on Amazon or, or eBay for like 10 bucks a set. Or you can go to your local, like, uh, what is, uh, your local store and find these too, right? So they're cheap. So I got a real fine tip one on there and I'm going to do the eyes. I don't think I'll film it because it'll just, well, maybe I'll try it. just going to be too hard for you to see what's going on. Okay, there you guys can see I got the detail carved in. Did the eyes the best I could. It's such a small thing, right? Like look at it in my hand. So I got the hair coming up here. It will kind of give them a grip on the handle, you know. And um, so it's all done. I got the nostrils carved in. I got in the inside of the lip carved under the mustache to separate it from the mustache. Um, age lines under the eyes. His cheeks bones are in. Okay. So now what I got is this little tiny burr. It's a metalworking burr, guys. I think I list them on my uh, Amazon, Amazon store listed below. You can find them. So this set here I think they're like 20 bucks or something I paid Canadian but these are wicked these are wicked little burrs for detailing guys 
you know, especially when you got this micro carver, it works really good. So I'm going to cut all the beard hairs in now. I won't film that, but uh, I'll be back after I do that. Okay. I'm going to do the eyebrows below the lines, below the eyes, the age lines, the mustache, the beard hairs, and the hair hairs. Okay. Okay guys, so I got it all sounded up. I just want to show you. I forgot to film. This is my sander. These are little Dremel things that come with those zip cut discs. It's a little screw screw on the top. You just get this emery cloth sandpaper. Man, my, my carving world sure changed since I made this. I'm not the, the inventor of it, but man, I love it. Um, so I sanded the whole piece with this. This is 80 grit on here. And um, you can go on my playlist to find out how I make that bit. But here you go, Robert. So what do you think so far? See, it's all sounded nice. You guys, this is, like I said, I think this might be poplar wood. Poplar? Poplar? However you say it. But uh, so it's fairly soft. So you guys watch when you're really learning about carving different type, uh, sanding different types of woods. If it takes away the details or not. So this, this held pretty good actually, so it's not that soft. So you see I got his hair going up around the back here. I left that like that just to say, it. look, it's a knot. And the hair goes up and around. So we'll give him a handle for his uh, cane, give him some grip. So anyways, what I got, I just barely got enough color left in this uh, min wax. What color is this? I believe this is, uh, can't read French, Mission Oak. My favorite color so yeah I'll just uh, I got this foam brush I'll put my gloves on so what I do is I wipe it on here quickly then I wipe it off quickly and then I hit it with my flap sander again just to give give the high points uh, features okay so I'll do that now oh yeah guys what am I saying right now sign it sign it okay guys the last of my poly shade in this color till I get some more Let's just put a bit on here and see uh, what happens. This is a lot darker than he originally sent it to me, but he says the color is my choice. I made sure, guys, you always kind of want to ask to make sure that they're going to be happy with whatever you do, right? So I'll just show you. This is such light wood. It's not going to be that dark, but I'm going to wipe it now, okay? So I probably don't even, I won't even need to sand it after because you can see it's still staying light. It's a hardwood. I don't know what type of wood this is. Hopefully he knows. Okay, bye. I'll be back. Okay, Robert. Here's your new, here's your old walking stick to a new walking stick. So it didn't go too dark. Only the d deeper point cuts went darker, so that's good. So I just rubbed it off and I didn't have to sand it again. There you go. What do you think? He's a cool old guy. See his hair kind of goes around there. Gives you a better grip on the handle, eh, Robert? If you're going to use it, or maybe you'll just put it in the corner of your house as a display piece. But you guys, when you do, excuse me, when you do smaller carvings like this, don't think that you they should be sold cheaper because that's not the case. The case is you're using smaller carving burrs and it takes just as... I can carve a bigger wood spirit like this with my chainsaw way faster than I carved this. This didn't take me too long. So I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. You guys, I love to read your comments and uh, let me know what you think about this walking stick. It's kind of like a cane walking stick. It's not that tall, but that's the way I do mine. Just carve Rob, carves his whole things. He's crazy. And uh, oh yeah, so there's another thing I did for you there too, Robert. Since I didn't know what to do with that hole in the top, I mixed up some blue metallic epoxy and poured it in there. So there's the top of your walking stick too. I have this uh, blue metallic powder. I ordered it off eBay. Get it all different sorts of color, but I mixed up the epoxy in this tube really quick first five minute just dollar store epoxy then I dumped a little bit of the blue, blue powder in there and then I sat there and I poured it in there till it reached the top and I had my uh, heat gun to try and get uh, the bubbles oh I think it turned out pretty smooth 
So there you go, Robert. I'll be putting it back in the same box and uh, you sent it in and I'll be sending it back to you probably next week. So make sure you comment on the this uh, video, Robert, and anybody else. And Robert, I'd love to hear what you say what type of wood this was because I'm just not too sure. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And hopefully to see you in live chat every Thursday, 5 o'clock, 5 Pacific time. See ya.